A few meters distant, Sidious came to a halt, gazing at Plagueis for a long moment, as though making up his mind about something. Then, blowing out his breath, he set his own glass down and reached for the cloak he had draped over a chair. Swirling it around himself, he started for the door, only to stop shortly before he reached it. Turning and stretching out with the force, he glanced around the room, as one might to fix a memory in the mind. Briefly, his gaze fell on the droid, its glowing photoreceptors whirling to regard him in evident curiosity. A look of sinister purpose contorted Sidious's face. Again, his eyes darted around the room, and the dark side whispered, Your election is assured. The Sun Guard's absent, Plagueis, unsuspecting and asleep. And he moved in a blur. Crackling from his fingertips, a web of blue lightning ground itself on the moon's breathing device. Plegus's eyes snapped open, the force gathering in him like a storm. But he stopped short of defending himself. This being who had survived assassinations and killed countless opponents merely gazed at Sidious, until it struck him that Plagueis was challenging him. Confident he couldn't be killed and in denial that he was slowly suffocating, he might have been simply experimenting with himself, actually courting death to put it in its place. Momentarily taken aback, Sidious stood absolutely still. Was Plagueis so self-deluded as to believe that he had achieved immortality? The question lingered only for a moment, then Sidious unleashed another tangle of lightning, drawing more deeply on the dark side than he ever had. Let's go over the second part of the speech, shall we? He said, smoothing his torsled cloak. You useless old fool. With a snarl, he threw the cloak back behind his shoulders and leaned towards Plagueis, planting his palms on the low table that was now puddled with spilt wine. It was Hego Damask as Doth Plagueis, who came to Naboo, determined to suck the planet dry of plasma and set the Trade Federation up as its overseers. It was Hego Damask as Plagueis, who then set his sights on a seemingly confused young man, and with meticulous skill manipulated him into committing patricide, matricide, and fratricide. Doth Plagueis, who took him as an apprentice, sharing some of his knowledge but withholding his most powerful secrets, denying the apprentice his wishes as means of controlling him, instilling in him a sense of murderous rage, and turning him to the dark side. Sidious stood to his full height, glaring. It was Plagueis who criticized the early efforts of the apprentice, and who once choked him in a demonstration of his superiority. Plagueis, who denigrated him in private for hiring an inept assassin to carry out the murder of Senator Kidd, and yet who allowed himself to be tricked by the ground and nearly killed by mercenaries. Plagueis, who turned away from the grand plan to focus entirely on himself, in an egotistical quest for immortality. Plagueis, who had the temerity to criticize his apprentice for having inculcated too much pride in the assassin he had trained. Plagueis, who attempted to turn his equally powerful apprentice into a messenger and mere intermediary. And Plagueis, who watched in secret while his apprentice tasked their true intermediary to reveal the reborn Sith to the galaxy. Sidious paused. Then, in derision, added, Plagueis the Wise, who, in his time, truly was, except at the end, trusting that the rule of two had been superseded, and failed to realize that he would not be excused from it. Plagueis the Wise, who forged the most powerful Sith Lord the galaxy has ever known, and yet, who forgot to leave a place for himself, whose pride never allowed him to question that he would no longer be needed. Still struggling for breath, Plagueis managed to stand, but only to collapse back onto the couch, knocking a statue from its perch. Sidious moved in, his hands upraised to deliver another bolt, his expression arctic enough to chill the room. A force storm gathered over the couch, spreading out in concretic rings to wash over Sidious and hurl objects to all corners. In the center of it, Plagueis' form became anamorphic, then resumed shape as the storm began to wane. Sidious's eyes bored into the moons. How often you said the old order of Bane had ended with the death of your master. An apprentice no longer needs to be stronger, you told me. Merely more clever. 
The era of keeping score, suspicion, and betrayal was over. Strength is not in the flesh, but in the force. He laughed. <laughs> you lost the game on the very first day you chose to train me, to rule by your side. Or better still, under your thumb. Teacher, yes. And for that, I will be eternally grateful. But master, never. Sidious peered at Plagueis of the Force. Oh yes, by all means, gather your midi-chlorians, Plagueis. He held his thumb and forefinger close together. Try to keep yourself alive while I choke the life out of you. Plagueis gulped for air and lifted an arm towards him. There's the rub, you see, Sidious said in a philosophical tone. All the ones you experimented on, killed and brought back to life, they were little more than toys. Now, though, you get to experience it from their side and look what you discover. In a body that is being denied air, in which even the force is failing, your own midichlorians can't accomplish what you're asking of them. Hatred stained Sidious' eyes. I could save you, of course. Return you from the brink as you did Venomous. I could retask your body to repair the damage already done to your lungs, your hearts, your aged brain. But I would do no such thing. The idea here is not to drag you back at the last moment, but to bring you to death's door and shove you through to the other side. City aside, a tragedy, really, for one so wise. One could oversee the lives and deaths of all beings except himself. The moon's eyes had begun to bulge, his pale flesh to turn scientific. You may be wondering, when did he begin to change? The truth is, I haven't changed. As we have clouded the minds of the Jedi, I clouded yours. Never once did I have any intention of sharing power with you. I needed to learn from you, no more, no less. To learn all your secrets, which I trust you would eventually reveal. But what made you think I would need you after that? Vanity, perhaps? Your sense of self-importance? You're nothing more than a pawn in a game played by a genuine master. The Sith Ari. A cruel laugh escaped him. <laughs> Reflect back on even the past few years, assuming you have the capacity. Yinkor. Dorvala, Iriadu, Maul and the Nemoidians, Naboo, an army of clones, the fallen Jedi Dooku. You think these were your ideas, when in fact they were mine, cleverly suggested to you, so that you could feed them back to me. You were far too trusting, Plagueis. No two Sith could ever really care about another. This has always been known. There is no way, but my way. Sidious' eyes narrowed. Are you still with me, Plagueis? Yes, I detect you are. Though barely. A few final words, then. I could have let you die in the Forbosi district. But I couldn't allow that to happen when there was still so much I didn't know. So many powers that remained just outside my reach. And as it happened, I acted wisely rescuing you. Otherwise, how could I be standing here and you be dying? I actually thought you would die on Sojourn. And you would have, if the hut hadn't tipped you off to Varuna's scheme. And yet, that also turned out to be for the best, for even after all you taught me, I might not have been able to take the final steps to the Chancellorship without your help in manipulating the Senate and bringing into play your various and sundry allies. If it's any consolation, I'm being honest when I say I could not have succeeded without you. But now that we've won the race, I have no need for a co-chancellor. Your presence, much less your unnecessary counsel, would only confuse matters. I have Maul to do what the risk of discovery might not allow me to do, while I execute the rest of the grand plan, growing an army fomenting rebellion and fabricating intergalactic war, corralling the Jedi and catching them unawares. Rest easy in your grave, Plagueis. In the end, I will be proclaimed Emperor. The Sith will have their revenge, and I will rule the galaxy. Plagueis slid to the floor and rolled face down, 
Death rattled his lungs, and he died. 114D started to approach, but Sidious motioned for it to stop. We are going to have to find you a new home and a new body, droid. 114D looked once at the Mun's face, then at Sidious. Yes, Master Palpatine. Sidious moved to the window, then turned to regard the murder scene. He could mask would appear to have died because of a malfunction in his breathing apparatus. He would have the droid alert the medtechs, but no autopsy would be performed, and no inquest would follow. Hollows of their appearance at the galaxy's opera would run on the holonet, and pundits would weigh in. Senator Palpatine might garner even greater sympathy. His delight in being elected to the chancellorship diminished by sudden death of a powerful financial ally. Sidious moved back into the room to take a closer look at Plagueis. Then after a long moment, he returned to the window and pulled the drapes aside. His spirit soared, but briefly. Something was shading his sense of triumph, a vague awareness of a power greater than himself. Was a Plagueis reaching out from the far side of death to vex him? Or was the feeling a mere consequence of the apothesis? Outside, the summits of the tallest buildings were gilded by the first rays of daylight.